Patrick Regan Show. Call in now, 865-243-TALK. That's 243-8255. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to another week of Logical Reasoning. We are listening to, by Crooked Steps, the latest release off of Soundgarden's new CD entitled King Animal. For those of you wondering what was playing us into this hour of the Patrick Riggin Show here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. We are punching through the fog of irrational thinking and leading you around the rocks upon which many a well-intentioned yet unworkable government program lies. Helping to pierce through this veil of deceit is the radio station carrying my voice to parts of five of these great southeastern United States. It is also affectionately referred to as the flagship station of the Patrick Riggins Show, 100.3 WNOX here in Knoxville, Tennessee. As I advise you every week, you don't have to be living in the great state of Tennessee, nor the southeast, not even the United States. You can receive this show no matter where you are on this earth. Yes, even in orbit around it. If you have access to the internet, you have access to this show. Just pop open your favorite web browser and type in the location of this radio station's website. That would be www.wnoxfm.com. There you can watch and listen to this show being simulcast, courtesy of the in-studio webcam. That address again is wnoxfm.com You can also access all of the archive shows on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Patrick Riggins show. There you'll find almost every show we have done since the beginning. I say almost because unfortunately we don't have a few of the earliest ones, but there is enough sound and logical reasoning in all the other ones to make up for those few that are the early few that are missing there. Someone who is never missing from the show, well, other than me, Patrick Riggins, seeing how it's my show, I should probably be here for it. <laughs> but also, here is our show producer, Tori. Hello. And coming off a wild night of playing with the band. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and doing another night tonight. Yes, back-to-back nights. Love them. So you yeah. won't, won't plug that? Uh, we played the Crown and Goose last night, the Beat Club, uh, and uh, we're playing there again tonight. Uh, Beat Club goes on. We go on stage at 6 o'clock, go from 6 till 10 at the Crown and Goose. Doing the whole My Day, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, the pub crawl. <laughs> and they were crawling last night. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Tori was not crawling, I guess. No, Tori behaved himself last night. Still feel <laughs> rough today, but it's just because it's a late night. I behaved myself. And then, but tonight, since you won't be playing Monday, of course you got to work. No, I got to work in the morning too, my week job. Yeah. So no, I'll be beha- behaving myself tonight. Hmm, I'm a good boy. <laughs> Did you wear the green? I got a green bandana. Oh, oh there, there we, we yeah, go. There in my back pocket. <laughs> I yeah. don't have to wear green because my name's Patrick. Ah, that's that. That yes. gets me out of that. Eddie Beacon already gave me a hard time about just the green bandana today. So <laughs> it's like you're in a. Irish gang. Hi. <laughs> 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 All right. Also, um, we want to give Tori a chance to plug another project he's working on. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't get in trouble for this one. Oh, you uh, can't get in trouble. Like I say, I own this show, so uh, whatever we do on this show is my business. So, my wife and I have uh, opened up our own internet radio station. Um, You can get there by going to shoutcast.com right now, shoutcast.com. Put in Pirate Radio 13, and it's different music for different people. (laughs) (laughs) So far, we were playing stuff like uh, Rolling Stones and some uh, Frank Sinatra, you know, just different stuff. No one style, mostly rock, but... Working comedy Hank style. Williams Sr., Hank the Third, just all kinds of different... It's a hodgepodge, so go check it out. I'd What's, appreciate it. And that address again? That is at... You can go shoutcast.com and put in the search Pirate Radio 13. Pirate Radio 13. Pirate Radio 13. And all then right. next week, I'll have a new a new address because we'll have our website up about it. Do you have a lot of... Do you say a lot of I matey and stuff like that on there? 
Do what? Do you have? Do you say say a lot of uh, I matey? I I I. That's that's where I was trying to go with that joke. Well, we have like commercial. <laughs> what's really cool is I do actually have commercial breaks in there, but like they're the old Kaz Walker commercials <laughs> and the old Jimmy Dean. You know, just stuff we from this area from the seventies and and before. So, get tune in, listen to a. Corey's side project, one of his side projects. It's becoming a major project yeah, now. You've so. got the band, you've got uh, your regular job, and now you've got... I've got two uh, bands. And, uh, yeah, two bands. <laughs> two jobs, two and daughters. <laughs> just two everything. One wife. One wife. She's the third, but still one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully everybody tune in and listen to that. Like I said, I haven't had a chance yet. I'll probably tune in this evening, though. Well, and, thank you. Um, and so there's comedy and music that. and all kinds of stuff, and it is unedited. So if if you hear <laughs> so a bad word in a song or a comedy bit or something like that, don't get angry. Sorry. So it's rated M A. Yes. For well, we try to keep it friendly, but not everything we have in there is friendly. So, so you're friendly, but some of the material may not be. Yeah, I said you'll hear a George Carlin or something. <laughs> Steve Martin bit something. Well, we're almost up on the break, so we'll just stick with this thing. <laughs> Go ahead and talk about what you need to talk about. Yeah, here. no this this show is about Tory. No, it's not. that's that's why it's called the Tory Show, not the Patrick Reagan Show. <sighs> it's all about you. We want to take care of you first, and then we'll get around to my stuff if we get time. As George Corey says, enough about you. Let's talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are up on the first break of the Tory slash. Patrick Riggins show. Is Slash <laughs> going to be here too? I like Slash. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Top hat and all. He'll be here. All Tune right. in for that. <laughs> hang, hang around. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us the whole hour and we'll see what we can do about that. This is Patrick Riggins. We'll be back after this message with the oh, we'll talk about libertarianism, CPAC, a bunch of other stuff. Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. A little summertime there from Will Smith. Yes. Yes. Enjoying the warm weather. Yes. The Bradford pears are, are blooming right outside the studio here. Pretty white. Can you make a Bradford pear pie? Can you do that? It probably wouldn't taste very good. <laughs> It'd be kind of... And if it tastes anything like it smells... <laughs> It'd be kind of woody. <laughs> Bradford, pe- Bradford pears get a little stinky here in what, another two weeks or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. Ugh. But they're coming out, and that's the good thing. It's getting warm, and yeah. that's my yes, exactly. My favorite time of the year is warm. <laughs> doesn't doesn't matter when it occurs, <laughs> just warm. All right. On this segment of the show, we'll kind of get back to the meat of the show here. <laughs> I want to I want to talk about this new thing that's out. This exciting and new thing that has popped up recently. It's this new way to be hip to connect with all the young people hey and it's called libertarianism yeah ain't it cool this week at the conservative political action conference otherwise known as cpac we heard a lot of politicians trying to tap into this class of people they have newly discovered within the crowd it's more of a young crowd too and and they all want to be hip so hey um the only problem is these guys aren't libertarian. They don't even believe in it. They just want the votes. Now, Rand Paul, he's about the closest politician we have, but you know, even he has a little work to do when it comes to sticking to a strictly libertarian philosophy. Now, why is this? Why does libertarianism not draw more people to it? Now, frankly, it's because most people are not ready for the responsibilities that come with caring for yourself. They're scared of doing that. So we get people trying to take advantage of this little bit of recent publicity libertarian thought is having by proclaiming that they too, hey, I I believe in those libertarian principles. I do too. 
Well, except for one or two areas. You know, that whole drug legalization thing or pulling back our military from running all around the world or cutting out charity by the government. You can instantly tell when a politician or anyone is just trying to benefit from this recent spotlight on libertarianism without adopting it when you hear that sort of thing. It's like saying you're a Christian, but you don't believe in that no stealing thing or that love one another command. Other than that, though, hey, I'm all in on this Christian religion thing. Now, give me your vote because you're a Christian too, right? See, the the truth is there is no, quote, half libertarian, unquote, no limited libertarian, no conservative libertarian. Either you are one or you're not. When you hear politicians call themselves hyphenated anything, well, they're just trying to cover as many bases as they can. It's like our white president. He's white, you know. He said himself he's half white, half black. So you can refer to him as a white man just as easy as you can refer to him as a black man, correct? No. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. I guess it all depends on which side of the race card he needs to play which more often than not is the black side. All of these people are players on the same board game, that of governmental control. It doesn't matter which game piece they pick, the black one, the white one, the conservative one, the liberal one, or even the newest piece just recently added, the Hispanic one. They're all playing the same game, and that game is government knows best. And no matter how we roll the dice, they still advance around the board, taking more and more of our money while telling us they don't agree with doing so. Or at least that's what the conservatives say. Heck, at least the liberal people are up front and tell us they want to tax and spend us into oblivion. Speaking of which, I have a story that ran on Reason.com this week by Nick Gillespie entitled, The first Senate budget in four years is not worth the wait. And it says the Senate Democrats have, after four long years, finally released an annual budget document, and it's not worth the wait. It proposes spending $3.7 trillion in 2014, a number it grows to $5.7 trillion in 2023. It calls for almost a trillion dollars in new taxes over the same period. The one interesting thing about it is something that has been completely overlooked in most news accounts. When it comes to next year's spending and taxes, it is virtually indistinguishable from the GOP's rival plan. Well, what do you know? The Republicans and the Democrats are putting forward a budget that has almost the same spending and taxes for next year. Who would have thought that? The article continues, the Senate Democrats budget led in this effort by Senator Patty Murray, who's Democrat out of Washington, is called Foundation for Growth, Restoring the Promise of American Opportunity. They should be ashamed of themselves if this took more than a few long nights to pull together. With the 10 ear chutzpah, native to majority speakers in the world's greatest deliberative body, the document proclaims the fiscal year 2014 Senate budget builds on the work done over the last two years to create jobs, invest in broad-based economic growth, and tackle our deficit and debt responsibly. Here's a newsflash for the Senate Democrats and the rest of Congress. If you're proposing more of whatever it is you've been up to over the past two years or since 2009 when you last submitted a budget, thanks, but no thanks. What the Democrats' budget proposes is to increase spending from $3.5 trillion this year to $5.7 trillion in 2013, while the Republicans propose jacking the spending up 42% in annual federal spending over the next decade and locking in tax increases pushed by President Obama. While Ryan's, that's Paul Ryan's, budget zeroes out all spending on Obamacare, it keeps many of that plan's taxes. Those new levies are expected to raise about $800 billion in revenue over the next decade and include a new 3.8% tax on capital gains and dividends on households that earn more than $250,000 a year. Also a 0.9% additional Medicare taxes, also also on all household income over $250,000 a year. 
a new 2.3% tax on medical devices, and a 10% tax on tanning salon services. So you people seeking to get a tan are going to be paying more for doing so. I guess the government doesn't like tan people. Probably one of those congressmen got turned down for a date in high school by the sexy tan cheerleader. Now he's getting his revenge. So next year, the only year the budget legally covers, by the way, spending between the Republican and the Democratic budgets are only $200 billion apart. I'm sure that's a lot of money, but not that much when taken in the grand scheme of the whole federal budget. There is so little difference between Republicans and Democrats. And with that in mind, I'll read this other column, also from this week, is written by Brad Todd on FoxNews.com. He talked about the so-called libertarian takeover of the, of the Republican Party. Now, I've yet to see that, but I guess maybe the recent events have some people talking. Now, his column is entitled, Conservatism Cannot Survive a Libertarian Takeover. Now, first off, no duh. If libertarians took over conservatism, then it wouldn't be called conservatism. It would be called libertarianism. Besides, the, the libertarians aren't trying to take over anything. They are trying to roll back the takeover of America by these big government people. Understandably, big government people find this sort of behavior threatening. But back to the column. For three decades, the locus of the Republican Party family debate has been over social issues. Today, there is no such fight. And that's the bad news for all of us social and foreign policy conservatives. In other words, bad news for government knows best conservatives. That's what he means when he says social and foreign policy conservatives. Social conservatives use government to whack people over the head that don't agree with their views. They don't differ that much from some religious people who do the same thing with religion. The social conservatives' religion just happens to be government. The foreign policy conservatives do the same thing with the boogeyman of terrorists. If you don't go stomping around all the other countries, trampling on the rights of humans all around the world, now if you aren't doing that, well, then you must be a terrorist sympathizer. Remember this quote, you are either with us or against us. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. So, you agree with everything we are doing, or you're an enemy of the government. I didn't say enemy of the American people, just an enemy of the government, since government seems to perceive the citizens of this country as an enemy anyway. Why else would it spy on you? Why else would it want to know what you're doing, where you're doing it, and how you're doing it? You don't spy on your friends. You aren't worried about what they are doing. You trust they aren't trying to harm you. But can you say the same about the American government. Can you honestly trust the government to not harm you? If you say you can, I have some American Indians who you might like to talk to. Or some Japanese who were interned during World War II. Hey, you want something more recent? Ask the Mexicans who were slaughtered with weapons our government allowed criminals to procure all in the name of trying to get the same weapons banned in this country. Real quickly, oh, we're, uh, I don't have time to get to it. We're up on the break here on the Patrick Riggins Show. <laughs> yes, we are, Tori. Wow, <laughs> Already. So that's how fast this show goes by. Oh, when we come back, we'll try to get to the last part of this. Talk a little bit about Eric Holder. But I have some stuff from CPAC I want to get to first. And we'll also talk about the Defense of Marriage Act. That's coming up as well. Here on the Patrick Reagan Show, that's in the second great half hour, but quick half hour. Join us for it here in a couple of minutes. Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Reagan Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host... Patrick Riggins. Welcome to pre-summer. Yes. Cannot wait. Finally get through that cold weather. I hate it. This is Patrick Riggins with the Patrick Riggins Show on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. 
we are the cornerstone of that of that network, the benchmark, the the capstone for that network. And you are tuned into it. This segment, I will try to get back to that stuff in the previous segment if I have time, because I want to get to this stuff about CPAC. I mentioned during the last segment that CPAC was this last week. And I have a few quotes to play you from it, of course. One note is that uh, Rand Paul uh, won the straw poll that was held at the event with 25% of the vote. But anyway, here's a clip from his speech there. President Obama, who seemed once upon a time to respect civil liberties, has become the president who signed a law allowing for indefinite detention of an American citizen. Indeed, a law that allows an American citizen to be sent to Guantanamo Bay without a trial. Now, what Senator Paul is referring to is the National Defense Authorization Act that President Obama signed. And we talked about that a few weeks ago, I guess maybe a month ago. You can check it on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. And you can go back and listen to what we talked about there. But Mr. Paul can make this statement because he didn't vote for this unconstitutional piece of legislative BS. <laughs> but others speaking at CPAC, in fact, did. And how did President Obama get this piece of legislation? Did he decree that it was the law of the land? have someone type up that decree, and then have a signing ceremony? No. Congress voted and passed it. That's how the president had the chance to sign it. Congress has to have enough votes to get it through and send it to the president for a signature. But we don't don't want to talk about that. You see, because Mitch McConnell, he voted for it. Marco Rubio, he voted for it. By the way, he's an Hispanic Republican, you know, in case you were wondering. Ron Johnson voted for it. Pat Toomey, Marsha Blackburn, Diane Black, Eric Cantor, and yes, even that golden boy, Paul Ryan, voted for it. All these people spoke at CPAC, and yet they voted for a piece of legislation such as this. Hmm, doesn't sound real conservative to me. But then again, I'm not a hypocritical politician seeking to get your vote by whatever means possible. Here's another clip from that speech. Eisenhower wrote, how far can you go without destroying from within what you are trying to defend from without? If we destroy our enemy but lose what defines our freedom in the process, have we really won? A very... Very good point by Mr. Paul, and one I've made on this show virtually since the beginning. In this next clip, though, uh, Mr. Paul is talking about the Bill of Rights. Then what exactly is it that our brave young men and women are fighting for? To those who would dismiss this debate as frivolous, I say, tell that to the heroic young men and women who sacrifice their limbs and lives. Tell that to the 6,000 parents of kids who died as American soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan. Tell them the Bill of Rights is no big deal. This is what, in logic, is called a non sequitur, an argument whose conclusion does not follow from its premise. The Iraq and the Afghanistan wars had absolutely nothing to do with our Bill of Rights. Nothing. Not even our Constitution. Other than the fact that we ignored its requirement that Congress declare war before we can go to war, we didn't bother with that. But what this last clip demonstrates is that even the progeny of Ron Paul can fall victim to populist themes. I'll tell you what I'd like to tell the families of those people who died in Iraq and Afghanistan and all the other frivolous wars we have engaged ourselves in. I'll tell those families... And those veterans who didn't die but lost limbs or didn't lose limbs but time out of their lives, they'll never recover. I'll tell them as a nation, hey, we're sorry. We made a huge mistake, but we won't make it again. 
I'd like to tell them that, but I know it's a lie because we'll make that mistake again because our government sees fit to tell the rest of the world how to live. And if they don't want to live that way, well, then we'll make you. After all, the government treats its own citizens that way. Why would we expect it to treat the world any different? Senator Paul does get back on track, though, with, with this next clip. The filibuster was about drones, but also about much more. Do we have a Bill of Rights? Do we have a Constitution? And will we defend it? That is the question. Will we defend it? The answer is no. <laughs> Our representatives in government, as currently constituted, with very few exceptions, will not defend our Constitution and our Bill of Rights. They aren't now. So it makes us think they will in the future. So who will defend those documents? Well, it's the same people who won them. The same people who always do, the citizens of this country. It is up to us to take back our rights and liberties because if you're waiting for the government to give them back, you're going to be waiting a long, long time. Our party is encumbered by an inconsistent approach to freedom. The new GOP will need to embrace liberty in both the economic and the personal sphere. If we're going to have a Republican Party that can win, liberty needs to be the backbone of the GOP. We must have a message that is broad. Our vision must be broad. And that vision must be based on freedom. There are millions of Americans, young and old, native and immigrant, black, white, and brown, who simply seek to live free, to practice their religion, free to choose where their kids go to school, free to choose their own health care, free to keep the fruits of their labor, free to live without government constantly being on their back. What Senator Paul is describing is libertarianism, not conservatism. When he says the new GOP must embrace these values, he's barking up the wrong tree. The Republicans have never really embraced the concept that people can do for themselves, not in recent memory. What we are coming down to in this country is not Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative, but government-centric or individual-centric government. These two political parties are not really different in their approach to this in this country. They are both driven to provide government solutions to every problem. I've said this on this show over and over. If you listen to these other speakers with, our, with an ear towards freedom and liberty, you'll start to hear the inconsistencies. You'll start to understand that the future of this country lies with the American citizens, not the government. Do you really think government is going to cut itself back? Do you think it's going to willingly give up power and money? Give up all the benefits it derives from taking freedom from you? When you think about it in those terms, you realize the magnitude of the fight we have before us. And the important thing is not to lose heart and let the government win. Because you aren't fighting just for you. You are fighting for your children and your grandchildren. The good thing about this war is it doesn't involve guns, at least not yet. It only involves getting good people elected to office. It really isn't any more than that. But wait, you say, I've got this new program coming on television I want to watch. Or I just joined uh, this new fantasy baseball league. I don't have time to work on a campaign. The only problem is the government is constantly working to take away your freedoms. Just look at the, the, the dramatic erosion of them over the past 50 years. The government is always working. And it is counting on you to not want to take the time to fight it. So it wins battle after battle until the war is all but lost. And you are sitting there left trying to figure out what happened. All right, we're up on the last break of the Patrick Riggins Show. Yeah. Tori playing some good bumper music there. A little rage. <laughs> yes. Rage against the machine. <laughs> All right, when we come back, we'll hit 
the Defense of Marriage Act. Don't miss this. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. This is the Patrick Riggins Show. Playing a little Jimmy Buffett. Tori and I are watching the... <laughs> We're laughing at the people the attempting to drive. parking lot follies. <laughs> yeah, please. Some people have been had a little bit of, well, I guess, we're, uh, carryover from yesterday. Yes. And maybe getting started a little early today because there's some interesting driving going on out there. <laughs> uh, people, if there's an orange road cone, it doesn't matter if it's like kind of in the middle of the road, don't run over don't it. Don't run over it. Don't and go up the right it. side of the road. Yeah, yeah. Don't the go down the... side of the yes. road. Don't go up the wrong way. Yeah. And then back back out of it. And back, yeah. And, and Tori was taking, about to set up a pool to see if they'd go over the curb or not. Oh. <laughs> so. Mess up that nice Mustang. Yeah, it would have messed up that nice little Mustang. In other words, don't be an idiot. In other words, yeah, stay off Kingston Pike. There's quite a bit of reveling going on, I believe. If, if you are going to be an idiot, please stay home. I don't need you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Some of us have things to do besides... <laughs> Sit on the side of the road and wait on the police to show up for an accident report. <laughs> All right, real quickly during this last segment of the show, I want to address something that's currently before the Supreme Court, and that is the Defense of Marriage Act. Now, people and organizations have been filing amicus, amicus briefs for both sides trying to convince the Supreme Court to either keep or toss the act. One in particular caught my eye from so-called family law expert Helen Aver. I think it's Averi. She argues that society's interest in the upbringing of children and marriage's unique ability to serve the interest explains the government's involvement in marriage. Tracing the consequences of the past half centuries, quote, retreat from marriage and its disparate effects on America's poor, she argues that redefining marriage to exclude sexual complement, complementary, complementarity, that's it, complementarity, <laughs> I don't even think that's a word, but she used it, <laughs> would cause social harms to increase. Now, this is from a family law expert arguing that the past half century's disparate effects on America's poor are directly due to the retreat from marriage. No, that is wrong. It is from government programs destroying the will of people to provide for themselves. She goes on in the piece, and 37 scholars of federalism and judicial restraint argue that principles of federalism and judicial restraint urge this court to exercise caution when considering the expansion of constitutional rights in areas of contentious social dispute. The laboratories of democracy, not unelected judges, should make marriage policy for the nation. Now, can someone tell me where in the Constitution or a state's Constitution that the people who originally set up that government wanted it sticking its nose into the private life of of an individual and with whom uh, what they who they want to have sex with and, and who they want to live the problem is government should not be involved at all the government has no basis for telling people who they can marry and who they can't period end of story here's a clip from dr ron paul whose son we just had on this last segment here's a clip from what he had to say on marriage and we've we've played this on the show before I think the government should just be out of it. I think it should be done by the church or private contract, and we shouldn't have this argument. Who's married and who isn't married? I have my standards, but I shouldn't have to impose my standards on others. Others have standards, and they have no right to impose their marriage standards on me. And I just don't like it. But if we want to have something to say about marriage, it should be at the state level and not at the federal government. Just get the government out of it. It's one area where it's totally unnecessary and they've caused more trouble than necessary. There you go. It isn't the government's business who is married and who isn't. The whole argument that the problems of America can be laid directly at the feet of the fact that we don't have as many people married as we used to, that's a fallacy. It is really a symptom of a deeper problem that we don't want to address. The problem is government handouts, government charity. That is the problem. 
government taking money from one citizen and giving it to another does no one any good other than the government. It doesn't help the person on the receiving end. It only destroys their will to work, their motivation to take care of themselves. It certainly doesn't help the person on the giving end. Their money is being taken from them. And it isn't just a problem with having Democrats in office. Even the Republicans believe in it. Here's a clip from Marco Rubio that I played on this show just recently. Now, I believe in federal financial aid. I couldn't have gone to college without it. One of these programs is Medicare. It's especially important to me. It provided my father the care he needed to battle cancer and ultimately to die with dignity. And it pays for the care my mother receives right now. And here is Paul Ryan from the Republican Weekly Address just yesterday. For younger workers, hoping for a secure retirement, we will protect and strengthen Medicare so that it's there for them just like it's there for my mom today. Yes, not doing away with government subsidized health care, no sir. That's not only a liberal Democrat program, that's a conservative Republican one as well. Can't seem to find it in the Constitution, though, but who cares? But, Patrick, you say, that's just one address. Well, here is last Tuesday when Paul Ryan introduced the House Republican budget. We don't think it's fair to let critical programs like Medicare go bankrupt. Yep, you heard it correctly. Medicare is a, quote, critical program, unquote. So if it is so critical to the survival of this country, how did we get along before 1965 when it was introduced? Are they trying to convince us that people were dying in the streets? We had bodies piling up before 1965. The humanity. The humanity. I know quite a few people in this audience can remember this country before 1965. I don't think one person is going to be telling me about all the tragedy and hardship we encountered before 1965, before Medicare came along, how the death rate was astronomical before Medicare kicked in. Boy, aren't we lucky it's here now. Here's what well, we got time for. It. Here's another clip Mr. Ryan talks about repairing the safety net in this country. We repair the safety net so that we can help those in need. That's what I'm talking about. Defensive Marriage Act, Medicare, Obamacare, Social Security, safety nets, all this intrusive and wasteful government, and neither side wants to do anything about it. All of these problems could be solved tomorrow by Congress voting to take government out of it. But that isn't going to happen. Why? Because it would take money and power from the government. And no matter what these conservatives say, they don't want that any more than the liberals do. That's why I say Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, they are all the same. Instead of all that, let's call it, like I said, you're either a government-centric party or an individual-centric party. Those two labels are much more descriptive than any of those other ones. All right, we are up on the end of the show here at the Patrick Riggins Show. Yes. How much time we have to worry about a minute, probably? Yeah. You want to plug that station real quick before we go? Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, anybody uh, want to check out the internet radio station that I've started? It's uh, uh, shoutcast.com. Go there. Um, you can go there mobile, uh, desktop, iPhone, um, Android. Uh, Get the app and go to search and put Pirate Radio 13 in there and listen and enjoy. Listen and enjoy. There you go. That's what we ask here. All right. Yeah. We're up on the end of the show. Be sure and tune in to Tori this week. Listen to him. Yay. You have been listening to the Patrick Reagan Show here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. If you want more information about us, you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Patrick Reagan Show. Hit that like button. You can also go to YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. And you can email us at patrickriggenshow at gmail.com or send us a card or letter to WNOX here on Kingston Pike. Join me next Sunday afternoon where once again we'll talk about freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. This is Patrick Riggins. Get out enjoy the warm weather this week. We'll see you next Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Have a great week. Join us again next week for a solid dose of truth on The Patrick Riggins Show. Every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. Be there.